Like we're just gonna start it. Yeah, he's that's gonna. What I thought. Yeah. That's why I said just print right here. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome into worship, and you too, cicadas. <laughs> Welcome into worship this morning, Mount Hebron folks. We are glad to be sharing this space together on a beautiful morning, and we welcome Mr. McIntyre to be with us as our bagpiper. Scottish Sunday, my first time. <laughs> so I'm excited to enjoy this with you and uh, grateful for those who decided to get together and try to sing along this morning. We have lots of music, and I don't know if one is going to be more heard than another, but we're going to be grateful and give thanks and have joy for all of it. So, a um, couple of things to call to your attention. Um, Father's Day is next week. That means two things. A, you might want to get your father a card, and there are cards available specializing in fathers, brothers, uncles, all kinds of things. Um, afterwards, after worship, and the rest of the cards will also be available. So you can see Kit and Kathleen afterwards to support card ministry if you would like to do so. Um, second thing is that next Sunday we move to what hour of worship? Nine o'clock. Yay! <laughs> I'll try to say it at least three or four times today. 9 a.m. worship starting next Sunday. 9 a.m. worship starting next Sunday <laughs> so that it gets into our heads and uh, we'll hope that I'm not the one who forgets. <laughs> so, lots of great things going on. We had a fun movie night the other night, uh, Christian Ed did, and uh, we loved to getting back into our veggie tales and introducing them to new folks. So, lots of good things. I'm gonna try to share with you a few pieces um, throughout worship about um, John Knox and about Scottish, Scotland's history and our history as Presbyterians. Um, one thing I want you to know is much of the liturgy today has been pulled from the Scots Confession or from other things John Knox has written. And so those are all wonderfully helpful for us. You'll notice that the wording might seem a little awkward or older, and that will be a good cue to you that this is uh, our Scottish heritage. Also wanted to share just a couple of things that I found of interest in remembering, and you may already know or you may not about John Knox. So he was born between 1505 and 1515. We're not sure when exactly, um, but east of Edinburgh of humble parentage. And he studied in one of the Scottish universities and was ordained to the priesthood. Um, however, he started to realize that he supported more Protestant views and started preaching his Protestant views. He was captured, taken to France, and for 19 months was a Galilee prisoner there in France. When released, he went to England where the Reformation was at full tide under Edward VI. 
and he was one of the chaplains of the king for quite a while in England. So he uh, then was in Geneva for a while studying with Calvin. This is how all of this comes together for us. We count Calvin and Knox as our two fathers of Presbyterianism. And this is when they came together and studied and worked together. All right, let's see. So 1560 to 1561, Scotland officially went over to the Reformation. And then the organization and administration of the church had to be figured out. And so Knox was the one with his associates who drew up what was the first book of discipline, which would have been a good predecessor to our book of order. Um, and because the Book of Discipline is still part of that. So some wonderful pieces of uh, our history that John Knox helped put in place. He also wrote the Book of Common Order, often known as Knox's Liturgy, that helped guide worship in those early years. So just wanted to give you those few pieces. I've got a few more a little later. Anyone else have any other announcements for us this morning? Mom, oh, did I miss a piece, Kathleen? Oh, Cards for Judith. Is that? Thank you. So you can also buy from Card Ministry Cards for Judith, which I hope everybody is sending her. We're trying to do a shower of cards. We need lots of drops for a shower, a rain shower. So we need lots of cards for a card shower. So I, I will send mine at the end with all the contributions made to the love gift. If you have not had a chance to make a contribution to the love gift, please do so by next Sunday at the latest so that we can send it and have it to her before the end of the month. Jeannie. So you will make your check to the church, but mark it love gift so that we can put it all together in one. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. All right. Wonderful. Let's continue in worship. I'm, let's take our moment for silent reflection, and then Cecilia will be joining us to lead. Good morning, everyone. Join me in the call to worship that's in your bulletin. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to God's name, to declare God's steadfast love in the morning and God's faithfulness at night. For you, O oh God, have made me glad by all your work. I sing for joy. God is upright and strong. He is the rock, and there is no unrighteousness to him. Holy and everlasting God, as we remember from where we come, to celebrate the long tradition of those who have gone before us. Trust in you for all good gifts. May we rise up to create the heritage and legacy for those descendants we have not yet to know. Inspire us anew in worship today to seek the following in honor, you and all we do through Christ our Savior. Amen. Please join in the song, Let Us, Let All Things Live Now Living. Yeah. Okay. I just want to be able to follow along. Hey, you tell me how you're I, good. I, yeah, I want to try to get off from you. Sorry? I want to try to get off from you. That's why. I'm going to start with the yeah. scroll down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs>
I'm sorry. I'm in D, and we transposed this AF, so you're in E flat. I'm sorry. You were in E flat this time. Yeah, well, I'm playing in D, but it sounds in E flat, yeah. Okay. Okay, I think I'll the rest comes in D. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are. I'm sorry. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy Creator, we confess and acknowledge that you created in your own image and likeness so that in our whole nature, no imperfection could be found. From this dimly and perfection, men and women have fallen, both conspiring against your sovereign We have shown our sides hostile to you and made and have made ourselves servants to sin. And the us of everlasting death has powered and dominion of our unless we are reborn from above. By the power of the Holy Spirit, work with rebirth in us, creating in our hearts and confidence to cho to, of the chosen one. With assured faith in your promise revealed in, uh, to us in your word, by this faith we grasp Jesus, Jesus, the graces and blessings promised in him. Amen. Join me in the assurance of pardon. Our eternal God and Father, who by grace alone chose us in Jesus Christ, Je I'm sorry about that, chose in the Son, Jesus, our our eternal God and Father, who by grace alone chose us in the Son Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world was led, appointed Christ Jesus to our head, our brother, our pastor, and the great bishop of our souls. By the and most holy, holy brotherhood, who whatever we have lost in Adam is restored to us again. again. We confess and the most doubtfully believed. Amen. Listen for the word of God. Gracious God, we know that your word is sufficient to shape us to the more like you. Now open our ears so we have hear your sense your authority in it and respond in the faithful service in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading is Mark 1, 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after the sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and dame, 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 dame possessed. The, the whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Right. I want to see, I know we have a few young ones here. I don't know if you have um, comfort level coming up to the steps where I could talk to you a little bit. What do you think? All right. Great. <laughs> yeah? Okay. 
yeah, you can just have a seat if you want, if that's easy. Okay? Yep. Yeah, you can go all the way up to those steps. That's fine. If you want. That's good. All right. So let me ask, and I'll look this way too, because we have a couple on each, each spot. So have you ever been sick before? Yeah. Yeah? And have you been sick before? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of us have been sick, right? How do you feel when you're sick? Uncomfortable. I'm way into that one. Yes, you got. Yeah, you want to distract yourself, right? So you feel better, or you don't notice how bad you feel. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've all been sick. We know what it's like to be sick, and we don't feel too good. And we're trying to do other things. Now, did you know that sometimes being sick is not just about having a cold or having the flu or having a stomach bug. Sometimes we can also, you might not call it exactly sick, but we can get really, really tired and not able to do the things that we need to do. Has that ever happened to you? That yes. you get so tired you don't even want to move? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Well, you're lucky because you just got to stay right where you were and rest. Yep. So our story today talked about how Jesus knows when people are sick and he knows when people are tired. And did you notice what he did? Healed them. He made them all better, didn't he? He healed them. Yep. He made sure that everything was much better and that they were feeling good, not just in their bodies, but also in their hearts, that they were much happier. Right? Lungs. Yes. Yes, exactly. So when you're sick. Like that. That's right. Like you're exactly right. We have got some smart uh, children and wonderful educating parents here and teachers. So when you are sick or tired or struggling, I want you to remember that you can always pray and ask Jesus for help. And take a nap. It's both, right? We pray, but if you pray to feel better and you don't do the normal things that help you feel better, Jesus is probably thinking, so what part of this are you helping with? Right? We pray to Jesus for help and we take our medicine and we rest and we do the things we know we, that help us. Okay? All we of that. We also use that while we're praying. Mm -hmm. While we're praying to Jesus to help us, because God also helps us. Exactly, exactly. And we get all kinds of help that way. Yay, that's good news. All right, so let's have a prayer together, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for always knowing when we're tired and when we're sick and for helping us. Not just with medicines we can take and rest we can have, but with your love that heals us from the inside out. Help us to keep trusting in you all the time. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys, very much. All of you, I appreciate. I got interaction today. Yay! So you all can come on back to your parents, okay? Thank you for coming up. Oh, that's, you know what? That's for the people at home, so they can see us at home. Yep. Right, so continuing that same theme, adults, because I'm teaching through Mark, uh, the Gospel of Mark. This is our second Sunday of it, and we are in the Gospel. I know, Gladys, I'm right on top of you, aren't I? Well, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on top of you. <laughs> but that's all right. We know each other, and we're good. <laughs> exactly. Aren't we all, you know, in person happens in all kinds of ways, and here we are in the glorious moment worshiping. Well, friends, I, just as I talked to the children about I know we've all experienced it too, that horrible feeling that comes from being worn down, physically exhausted, emotionally spent, mentally depleted. Now, when it happens to me, and I must confess it happened a little bit last night, <laughs> my girls think it's hilarious. I have trouble even moving from the, my chair to the bed. 
They love to get behind me and just push me up the stairs, open the bed for me, laugh at me and tease me the whole way till I get the rest I need. Apparently, I say some pretty funny stuff when I'm that tired. I guess for them, it's such a change from my normally active self that they kind of sit up and take notice. Mom's different right now. So what does that exhaustion look and feel like to you? How often does it happen to you that you get to that point where you just can't go on and you've got to stop and rest? So as I said, last week we started a series on the Gospel of Mark so that we can rediscover who Jesus really is. What we learned right away last week is that Jesus is different. He speaks with authority. He speaks with charisma. He makes people pay attention. And he causes people to be willing to leave their homes and their families to follow him. He shows people faith in a very different light, not about rules, but about relationships. It's, gauge, it's engaging, it's real, and Jesus is out of the gate already in the Gospel of Mark, making a difference by healing people right along with his teaching. Jesus is not just some ordinary guy. Now this week we hear the rest of what happens on this first Sabbath day of Jesus' ministry. He has a few disciples with him and they go to one of the disciples' homes, Peter. Now Peter, or Simon as they're calling him right now, he's the one who always makes the front page, shall we say. We remember what Peter says and does. He comes right out with what he's thinking and feeling. And his mother-in-law has a fever, which we need to clarify that in those times was viewed as being possessed by an evil spirit, okay? Whereas the others then were keeping her at a distance until that evil spirit left, Jesus goes right to her, takes her hand, touches her, and heals her. Now, once that has happened, huge numbers of other people in Peter's village come for healing, which Jesus does as the sun is setting on the Sabbath day. Then Jesus rises early the next morning while everyone else is still sleeping, and he goes away to have some time with God. It's envisioned as time still in darkness. And as Jesus begins ministry, the human part of him likely needs time with God to wrestle through what that ministry entails and demands of his very human body. Then Jesus declares his mission to the disciples that he is here to preach and teach. And they move forward to another town so that he can do that and heal as well, for that will be important. Now, the balance of this passage is really about wholeness. What does wholeness look like? How do we maintain wholeness? What has God created us to be, ideally? In the Old Testament, wholeness is the concept of shalom. How many of you have heard that word, shalom? Okay, good. It can be defined as well-being, peace, harmony, health, just to name a few. There are lots of words that fit. But they all point towards the health of the whole being of us, not just a single part. Wholeness is harmony of body, mind, and spirit. It's why the commandment is to love God with our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. In other words, all of us, not just part of us. The Old Testament is always pointing towards a whole commitment to God so that everything else can fall into place in our lives. Now, in our passage today, Jesus is both bringing wholeness to people who need it, and he's modeling wholeness to all of us who need to see it. Jesus is not thrown off by illness or what it might mean. He goes straight to Peter's mother-in-law with this, and that's important. He heals her body, which brings her mind and spirit back to health as well. Now, I don't want to fail to note that she really gets who Jesus is by her response. For years, I've kind of passed over the note that she got up and served them. 
thinking that she fixed dinner, she cleaned the kitchen, stuff like that, and really, who wants to remember that? Because that's not exactly what I, it, the first thing is I want to do when I've been sick. But the verb here in the Greek, I missed, and I shouldn't have. It is the verb that is that of deacon service, diakonia. That is service that Jesus ordains and needs. So you could actually call Peter's mother-in-law the first disciple who really gets what it means to follow Jesus in service. That is the blessing she gives. She is restored to wholeness, and the first thing she does is to start true deacon service for Jesus, true ministry, helping and supporting him. Wow. So wholeness comes with healing, for God re restores the harmony inside of us, and wholeness inspires us to serve others, too. Now, as the passage goes on, as I said earlier, many other people who are seeking wholeness and harmony come to Jesus, and Jesus patiently heals them all, paying close attention to their needs. And the Sabbath is ending as Jesus is healing. The Sabbath is an important concept to pay attention to throughout our reading of Mark. We already know from our studies that Jesus gets in trouble a lot for healing on the Sabbath day. The, the leaders of the synagogue consider that to be work, to heal. And the idea is you don't do any work on the Sabbath, you rest. But let's try to see it from Jesus' perspective. I imagine Jesus feels there is no better day than the Sabbath for people to come to wholeness and harmony within themselves. Would you agree? Think about that the day created by God for rest and restoration is perfect for healing and wholeness. The Sabbath was created for the people of God, not the people of God for the Sabbath. That's a really important distinction. And you may have heard that preached on before, but you may not have. So if that's new to you, sit with that a little bit. Okay? The Sabbath was created for God's people not God's people created for the Sabbath. In other words, the whole point of the concept of Sabbath, of rest and refocusing on God in our lives, is that it heals and helps us so that we can continue with life and deacon service to our Lord and Savior. When we go on vacation, isn't that a form of Sabbath? Don't we notice that when we don't honor Sabbath time and Sabbath rest for body, mind, and soul, that life gets more and more difficult until we are indeed worn out beyond comprehension. That bone-weary kind of exhaustion that I described at the beginning is more and more likely when we ignore the Sabbath that God has given for us, to us for a reason. Jesus wants us to take care of ourselves. And he not only gives that to people, but he also models it. That's why in that very next section, we see Jesus going away to pray and spend time with God. He needs renewal and refreshment too, as a perfect mix of divine and human. When the disciples find him, they don't seem to understand how important this is. Everyone's looking for you, they declare as if Jesus' only responsibility is to them and other people and not to taking care of himself. They haven't learned that yet. They will. They haven't yet realized either the concept of service, of the need for that rest and wholeness and balance in all that they are doing. Balance is one of those wonderful words for us human beings. We're not all that good at it, are we? And we can use much more of it in our lives. We know, of course, too, that Jesus touches our spirits, too. And that's wholeness embodied, body, mind, and spirit together, in harmony, at peace, rested and restored. Wholeness means taking that time, that true Sabbath time, 
because that's why God made it, to bless us and sustain us for all that life would bring. And when we blow it off, we don't receive the blessings that God has designed for our bodies, minds, and spirits, and life is much harder. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This is not a Sabbath day for me. There's too much preparation and, and getting everything ready. I take my Sabbath time at other times, and sometimes it is not a whole day. And I imagine that in your lives, a whole day is hard for you too. So maybe we need to think in terms of Sabbath moments, Sabbath hours. Maybe we need to think in terms of what gives us rest and joy and do it more. But we need to make a commitment to that Sabbath for our own health and well-being and because that's the whole point of why God made it. So that's Jesus' important thing this week for us to notice and keep mindful of, that wholeness matters. Jesus lives it, Jesus gives it, and Jesus wants us to embrace it so that we can be who we are fully meant to be. It's our responsibility to take that gift of Sabbath and enjoy God's gifts that come in it and through it. I'm always thankful that God has our best interests at heart, that he wants us to get rest and restoration for all of us, not just for a part of us. And I pray that all of us here will be able to make a renewed commitment to Sabbath time for ourselves and for our families. In the name of God, our creator, Christ, our redeemer, and the spirit, our sustainer. Amen. Let's sing our next song together. I want to thank Gloria for gathering together this group of singers for us this morning. We wouldn't have such a large group if Gladys hadn't called them on the phone and encouraged them to come. So thank you, Gladys. So when do we start with the back table chart with you? No, I'm going to start. Okay. So you give me a D just yeah, so I can check. I've trained yeah. it over here. Yeah. Just give me a D. Your D. Yeah, my D, which is your E flat. Okay. I've moved it. Oh, you, you transposed it. I just it. want to hear that I moved the right direction. <laughs> Thank you. 
Our affirmation of faith today is the first section of the Scots Confession in our Book of Confessions. Let's say together what we believe in the words that John Knox helped pen long ago. We confess and acknowledge one God alone, to whom alone we must cleave, whom alone we must serve, whom only we must worship, and in whom alone we put our trust who is eternal, infinite, immeasurable, incomprehensible, omnipotent, invisible, one in substance and yet distinct in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, by whom we confess and believe all things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, to have been created, to be retained in their being, and to be ruled and guided by his inscrutable providence for such end as his eternal wisdom, goodness, and justice have appointed, and to the manifestation of his own glory. All praise be to God, our creator. As we turn to our time of prayer today, John Knox wrote this about prayer. Who will pray must know and understand that prayer is an earnest and familiar talking with God. To whom we declare our miseries, whose help we implore and desire in our adversities, and whom we laud and praise for our benefits received. So that prayer contains the exposition of our pains, the desire of God's defense, and the praising of God's magnificent name, as the Psalms of David clearly teach. And so keeping those pieces in mind, that we are approaching God to declare the things that are troubling us, to ask for help, and to praise him for all the goodness that God has given. Let's turn our hearts to prayer, keeping in mind those prayer concerns that we shared with you by email, and many other things that are on our minds and hearts, and that are needs for the world. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray. Guide us by your Holy Spirit that our prayers may serve your will and show your steadfast love to the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us and modeled for us how to find balance in our lives, how to seek peace and wholeness within and to honor the Sabbath, which has been created to give us rest and renewal for the lives that we live. God, our creator, we pray for the world you have made. Overthrow evil powers, right what is wrong, feed and satisfy those who, who thirst for justice, so that all your children may freely enjoy your creation <clears throat> and joyfully sing your praises. Gracious God, you have called us, us, the people gathered here and many across the world who trust in you to be the church of Jesus Christ. Keep us one in faith and service, breaking bread together, proclaiming the good news to the world so that all people may believe you are love and turn to your ways through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Eternal God, you sent Jesus Christ to break down the walls of hostility that divide us. Send peace on earth. Put down greed, pride, and anger, which turn nation against nation and race against race. 
Help us learn from the lessons of history of our ancestors so that we may see the way to love others. Speed the day when wars will end and the whole world accepts your rule. O oh God, whom we cannot love unless we love our neighbors, remove hate and prejudice from us and from all people so that all your children may be reconciled with those we fear, resent, or threaten and live together in your peace each and every day. Merciful God, you bear the pain of this world. Look with compassion on those who are sick, on those who are hurting, on those who are lonely, on those who are struggling and suffering, especially on all those whom we have raised in our prayers. Cheer them by your word and bring healing as a sign of your grace so they may cling to it and see your work in their lives. God of comfort, stand with those who sorrow. Give them assurance that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall separate them from your love. God of compassion, bless us and those we love, our friends and our families, that drawing close to you, we may be drawn closer to each other. And now, O oh God, you are the God of all generations. And on this day, when we remember our heritage, the birth of our denomination to the work of John Knox and John Calvin, and many who have passed this down and faithfully attended your will, we praise you for all your servants who having been faithful to you on earth now live with you in heaven. Keep us in fellowship with them until we meet with all your children in the joy of your eternal kingdom. For we trust your word. We are thankful for your spirit who enables us to pray and to bring our requests to you. And we pray together the prayer that our Savior taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We close today with one of the sacred hymns of our faith, Amazing Grace. Let's sing with joy and with full understanding of the grace by which we stand.
I thank everybody for your patience and your love as we join together out here. I want to thank Mr. McIntyre and all of our singers this morning for their wonderful work. It makes beautiful music together. And here we are together, able to do this. Friends, as we go to continue to live in the name of Christ, <laughs> we go in the middle of God's creation. We go with joy because the God who gave us the grace to live is also the same God who gave us Sabbath rest, designed us for it, or designed it for us so that we could be okay. Don't forget that. That's part of God's grace for all of us. Take part of it. Take hold of it. Enjoy it. Go in the love and grace of God to serve the best you can and to always remember that it is God's grace by which we stand. Amen.